Welcome. So glad to have you back for another edition of Just the Truth in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. We've got a lot to cover today. It was a busy night with CNN hosting Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Ambassador Nikki Haley in a debate while over on the Fox News channel. President Trump was having his chance at a town hall meeting in Iowa, and Trump suggested that he's already picked his vice president already. Huh. we got the details for you there. Another GOP presidential hopeful drops out of the race. We'll tell you who that is. And there was chaos on Capitol Hill yesterday. Who caused it? Hunter Biden. He triggered the chaos Wednesday with a surprise and brief appearance at a House Oversight Committee hearing where members were debating a resolution holding him in contempt of Congress. wonder if he cleared this visit with Daddy Joe first. Governor Henry McMaster shares his vision for school teachers' salaries, announcing plans for his executive budget. The governor says we need to be paying our teachers more in South Carolina. And big news in college football. Did you hear who retired? Stay with us because I have all the details. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills. <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. As Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley were facing off on CNN in the third and final Fox News town hall series of the 2024 GOP presidential candidates, President Donald Trump, the obvious Republican primary front runner right now, was talking with Brett Baer and Martha McCallum. So which do you want me to cover first? Or you do, do you even want me <laughs> to talk about the CNN debate? Let's start with Trump. Uh, he said that he will renew his efforts to overturn the Affordable Health Care Act. Of course, we affectionately know that as Obamacare if he wins in November. He said Obamacare is too expensive and otherwise not good health care on a post on social media. And he addressed this as uh, one of the questions in the town hall. The former president asserted that reforming Obamacare enacted back in 2010 would be one of his administration's top priorities. On the subject of Ukraine and Israel, President Trump blamed President Biden's weak presidency for Ukraine and the Israel invasions. He argued that getting along with people with hundreds of nuclear weapons is not a bad thing before suggesting that foreign leaders view the current commander-in-chief as just simply weak. He said, quote, you know, they want to make it like a bad thing. It's a very good thing, but peace through th uh, strength they don't want to mess around with. It would never have happened in Ukraine. Russia would have never gone in, would have never happened. The recent attack on Israel would never have happened under my watch, he said. Trump has not been shy in showing where he stands on the Israel-Hamas war. The former president has been a major proponent of Israel, including during his first term where he oversaw the historic Abraham Accords. Trump has been vocal about what he thinks about the war. At the onset of the war, Trump claimed that there wouldn't be a conflict in Israel if he was still president. He also called for squad member Representative uh, Rashida Tlaib, a Democrat from Michigan, to be impeached over her rhetoric regarding Israel. He said, I think she's terrible. I think she's a horrible representative of our country, and frankly, she'd be impeached for that. That's what she should be. That's barbaric, he said. Uh, additionally, Trump criticized the Biden administration over its handling of the war, including when Hamas hostages were released, but no Americans were among those freed. He said, anybody notice that Hamas has returned people from other countries, but has not returned American hostages, he said. Uh, there's only one reason for that. No respect for our country or our leadership. This is a sad and dark period on a, uh, for America. And on immigration. Trump told Iowa voters that America has no choice but to carry out a massive deportation effort. The former president said that the uh, southern border is not sustainable for our country. When asked how he would handle the influx of illegal migrants already in America, he said, we have millions and millions of people here. It's not sustainable. He pointed out New York City with its getting the regular students out of their school so that illegals could stay in their place. Uh, Trump also responded to a question about the statement that some of his opponents say that he would uh, be a dictator. 
and possibly seek revenge in a second term. Here's the exchange between he and Brett Baer on Fox News. Now, in recent days, you seem to issue a warning that if in the courts, and even the U.S. Supreme Court, if they didn't treat you fairly, that maybe there would be bedlam in the country. Use that word, bedlam in the country. And in the last two days, at the same time, in the last two speeches, President Biden is focusing his campaign on the threat to democracy and political violence. Take a listen. I'll say what Donald Trump won't. Political violence is never, ever acceptable in the United States political system. Never, never, never. All right, so to Robert's question, this is clearly a focus of the Biden campaign. So can you say tonight that political violence is never acceptable? Well, of course that's right. And, of course, I'm the one that had very little of it. Take a look at wars. Again, I didn't start. I wasn't involved in wars. We beat the hell out of ISIS. We won 100 percent. We brought our troops back home. Look at, look at the violence that we've had. Look at the violence we have recently. Right, with- but when you say bedlam... What do you mean? I think you you have bedlam. I think you look at Joe Biden, it's bedlam. You have a man who can't lead. You have a man who can't find his way off a stage after he makes a speech that lasts for about two minutes. Now, I think bedlam is Joe Biden. I think that he's using this. This is just a political ploy. Trump is a dictator. He wants to be a dictator. You know, it's interesting. I did a show, Sean Hannity. Did you ever hear of him? He's a very nice man. (laughs) And he said, essentially... You're not going to be a dictator, are you? Tell me. I think he was trying to give me a nicer question than maybe you guys would. He meant it very well. I said, I'm going to be a dictator for one day. We're going to do two things. The border, we're going to make it so tight you can't get in unless you come in legally. And the other is energy. We're going to drill, baby, drill. After that, I'm not going to be a dictator. After that, I'm not going to be a dictator. So, so you weren't press, saying no, that no, the And courts- the press picks it up. So I said, I'm going to be a dictator for one day. They cut it. They go, I'm going to be a dictator. But they cut the rest of the sentence. No, no, I am not going to be a dictator. I'm going to manage like we did. We were so successful that the country was coming together. It was actually coming together and coming together well. It was a beautiful thing to see. And we're going to do that again. One of the highlights last night was when Fox host Martha McCallum asked about his cabinet and potential running mate. Trump, uh, as he often likes to do, uh, said that uh, he knows who his running mate's going to be. He just can't tell us. Just ask you a follow-up on that about who would be in your, in your cabinet, in your administration. Mm-hmm. If you are the nominee, which I know you expect to be, who would be in the running for a vice president? Well, I can't tell you that, really. I mean, I know who it's going to be. <laughs> give us a hint. I'll give you. We'll do another show sometime. Well, what about any of the people who you've run against? Would you be open to mending fences with oh, any sure, of them? Oh, sure, I will. I will. I've already started like Christy better. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, no, Christy for vice president? I, I don't see it. I don't see it. That would be an upset. Christy for vice president. You know, Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, I'd like to announce... <laughs> That is classic Trump. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. Who do you think his running mate's going to be? And do you think he really does know that, or is he just kind of toying with uh, the Fox News host? Your comments are welcome on the Furman text line. Furman Ford text line. 864-477-5639. You can leave a voice message if you'd like. Emails welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. You know, it's never more important now than to locally to support locally owned businesses owned by people who actually live here. Just take a look around. Corporations have never been more powerful, bigger, and that goes to that's especially true for car dealerships. So many of these car dealerships now are owned by these huge corporations, not by the local folks here in town like Furman Ford. When you call, when you email, when you drop by Furman Ford in Lawrence, you can deal directly with one of the Furmans, Matthew Furman, Jim Furman. They do business the right way. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line. That means, again, when you stop in, when you need uh, service, you can talk with a member of the Furman family. They'll help you navigate some of the great deals they have on great selection of pre-owned vehicles. They'll help you with your service. You're not going to wait weeks if you want to get service 
at Furman Ford. Find them online at FurmanFord.com. FurmanFord.com. And another one does bite the dust. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie announcing that he is suspending his campaign for president. Christie, a long shot for the nomination from the beginning in a race that uh, dominated by Donald Trump. In recent weeks, has faced increased calls from fellow Republicans and from some voters to end his bid to give rival Nikki Haley a boost as she aims to close the gap with Donald Trump. Former governor, one of the most vocal Trump critics in the GOP, emphasized his goal now is to make sure that Donald Trump does not win a second term in the White House. I've always said that if there came a point in time in this race where I couldn't see a path to accomplishing that goal, that I would get out. And it's clear to me tonight that there isn't a path for me to win the nomination, which is why I'm suspending my campaign tonight for President of the United States. I know, and I can see it from some of the faces here, that I'm disappointing some people by doing this. People who believe in our message and believe in what we've been doing. I also know, though, it's the right thing for me to do. Because I want to promise you this, I am going to make sure that in no way do I enable Donald Trump to ever be President of the United States again. And that's more important than my own personal ambition. Chris Christie, that was in a New Hampshire, I think it was New Hampshire, wasn't it? Uh, it, was, it was at a town hall meeting where he made uh, that announcement. Sources indicate that Christie... Uh, would not be announcing an endorsement for anyone in 2024 at this time. One of the sources speculated that Christie would wait until after the results of next Monday's Iowa caucuses. As a reminder, I'll be reporting uh, from Iowa next week, so be sure and uh, and uh, keep keep uh, keep in check here with at Just the Truth as I'll be giving you up to date uh, on. Uh, I'll be there uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. I hear it's very cold there. <laughs> Mike Gallagher sent me on this uh, on this venture, and I, I think I figured out why, because it's so cold there, he doesn't want to go himself. But it, it's going to be great fun. I'll give you firsthand knowledge of what's happening in Iowa. As I'm going to actually be attending one of the caucus meetings on Monday. Back to Chris Christie, the two most recent public opinion polls of likely voters in New Hampshire's Republican presidential primary uh, released this week, both indicated Christie at about 12% support in third place behind Trump and Haley. Uh, this was the same strategy Chris Christie used before, uh, putting all of his efforts into New Hampshire. He was defeated uh, in 2016 there, looked like he was headed for another defeat there uh, this year. Uh, Christie considered by some as one of the better communicators in the GOP. Uh, He was once a a strong Trump ally, but became one of the former president's most vocal uh, GOP critics in recent years. I've never understood the allure of Chris Christie to begin with. I've never been a big fan of Chris Christie. Uh, He was elected governor of a a very deep blue state, New Jersey, in 2009, overwhelmingly reelected in 2013, uh, first ran for president in the 2016 cycle. Uh, During that cycle, again, he put all of his efforts into New Hampshire uh, and crashed and burned. Uh, He was so far behind Trump, uh, who crushed the competition in the primary, uh, boosting him towards the nomination and, of course, eventually winning, uh, beating Hillary Clinton in November. Uh, Christie became the first among the other GOP 2016 contenders to uh, to endorse Trump at the time and, again, for years was a top outside advisor to uh, pre- uh to trump when he was in the white house but uh that w- that went south the former governor known for sort of the uh, in your face type of politics that new jersey has uh and look trump gives it back as as, as good as he gets uh, he argued that he was uh the only contender with the chops to potentially take down trump on the debate stage of course president trump has not participated 
in any of those debates. So Christie never got that face-to-face confrontation that he hoped. Christie becomes the latest Republican to drop out of what is becoming a very slim field now. Uh, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum ended his uh, bid last month. Of course, my friend uh, and our junior senator from South Carolina, Tim Scott, ended his back in November. Former Vice President Mike Pence suspended his presidential campaign on October 28th uh, during the address uh, to the Republican Jewish Coalition's annual leadership com- uh, summit back in uh, being held in Las Vegas. And we had some of the lesser-known candidates who also failed to qualify, like uh, Representative Will Hurd of Texas, Mayor, uh, the mayor of Miami, uh, Francis Suarez, and, and uh, Perry Johnson, the, uh, the, uh, the business leader. Um, but former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson does remain in the race, but uh, don't hear much from him. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. I love getting your comments. You can leave me a voice message. Emails are welcome as well. So Hunter Biden triggered Bedlam. That's one of Trump's uh, terms, isn't it? Bedlam. Uh, Triggered Bedlam yesterday with a surprise and a very brief appearance at a House Oversight Committee hearing where members were actually debating a resolution to hold him in contempt of Congress. Now, talk about staging a a political statement. Biden showed up with his lawyer, Abe Lowell, and his sugar brother, Kevin Morris, the the millionaire who has literally uh, loaned him millions of dollars to to help him pay his back taxes and all. Uh, They sat in the front row of the hearing room, caused an uproar among the panel's Republicans, as they should have, before leaving 17 minutes after he arrived with what appeared to be the camera crew for this documentary that is being made. Uh, (laughs) Representative Nancy Mace probably stole the comment of the day as she tore into Hunter, uh, calling him the epitome of white privilege. You are the epitome of white privilege, coming into the oversight committee, spitting in our face, ignoring a congressional subpoena to be deposed. What are you afraid of? You have no balls to come up here. Whoops. Hunter Biden should be arrested right here, right now, and go straight to jail. Wow. <laughs> Nancy Mace. I'm not going to repeat that. Nana Hudson doesn't uh, allow me to use language like that. <laughs> I, I'll bet Nancy Mace's mother probably wouldn't allow her either. Uh, Biden, of course, as you know, skipped the December 13th deposition that had been uh, uh, scheduled by claiming that he would prefer to testify publicly before the world in the impeachment inquiry into his dad's role in foreign business ventures. Uh, subpoenas for Hunter Biden's testimony were issued last year by the oversight and judiciary committees. Both panels voted along party lines yesterday afternoon uh, to re- refer a contempt resolution to the full house. Hunter stood up, left the hearing room, ending his morning uh, cameo when Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene began to speak. She tore into the first son, calling him a coward, uh, and was he was trailed by reporters, political operatives in the hallway. I mean, it was a spectacle. Uh, Representative Greene did not see the humor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse me, Hunter. Oh, Apparently, no. you're this is where he's walking words. out. Whoa. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. (laughs) Wow, that's too bad. And sits here with a smug look look on his face and runs away when it's my turn to talk. Not only is he a criminal, but he is a coward. (laughs) Uh, The president's son did take at least one question as he was walking down the hall because all the all the cameras and reporters are, are chasing him down the hall. Uh, and one reporter yelled out a question to him, and he answered, I'm sure, uh, against the advice of his attorneys. And he seemed to confirm that his father did, in fact, participate in, uh, a, in some phone conversation. Here's the, uh, here's the exchange between Biden and a reporter, uh, an unknown porter, reporter in the hallway 
Mr. Biden, why did you put your dad on speakerphone with your business partners if he had no involvement in your business? Do you have a dad? Did he call you? Yes. Did he answer the phone? Yes. Okay. But why did you need to talk to him during business meetings if he had nothing to do with your business? Yeah, because he had everything to do with his business. He, Joe Biden is Hunter Biden's business. Uh, completing this spectacle, there was a heckler uh, who kept yelling, Hunter, what's your favorite kind of crack, and are you on crack today? Now, Democrats on the Oversight Committee took turns yesterday insisting that uh, Hunter was willing to speak, but only in a public hearing rather than a deposition controlled by the panel staff. Representative Jasmine Crockett from Texas said, let me tell you why nobody wants to talk to y'all behind closed doors because you all lie. That's just the bottom line. Representative Jamie Raskin, the top Democrat on the committee, claimed that Republicans were moving against Hunter Biden because the president was innocent, despite the GOP inquiry focusing specifically on Joe Biden's role in his son's foreign dealings and those of first brother James Biden. Raskin said, why are we here? Well, we can't go after Joe Biden. He's clean. Let's go after Hunter Biden. Let's go get him. Well, uh, Representative Raskin, uh, I don't think there's anything clean about Joe Biden, and we're going to learn that hopefully sooner than later. Uh, Chairman James Comer said a deposition would seek to establish key facts and that Republicans would welcome a follow-up public hearing. Other committee Republicans noted yesterday that former President Donald Trump's adult children complied with subpoenas when they were issued by House Democrats as part of the witch hunt into the 45th president. Representative Byron Donalds, for example, said this isn't about Hunter Biden's white privilege. It's about Hunter Biden's Democrat privilege because Donald Trump Jr. showed up for five congressional subpoenas. There was never this circus, he said. Representative Eric Burleson, Republican from Missouri, said this kind of food fight this kind of circus that we've experienced is the reason why we want to have a deposition. In a deposition, you don't get people distracting the American public with all these other uh, topics. Uh, now, meantime, nearby, just down the hall, the Judiciary Committee w uh, was having their hearing. Representative Pramila Jayapal, the uh, Democrat from Washington, attempted to redirect focus onto Trump with the progressive caucus leader mistakenly saying Trump incited an erection <laughs> you, you heard me right she said he incited an erection meaning insurrection <laughs> uh, referencing the 2021 capitol riot oops uh white house press secretary corinne jean pierre repeatedly declined to comment on the proceedings at a regular briefing and would not clarify whether hunter is residing at the executive mansion during his time in washington you know that's a good question i hadn't even thought about that you think Hunter is staying at Daddy's place at the White House while he's uh, parading around the Capitol? You know, a few weeks ago, he, he appeared on the Capitol steps in defiance of the subpoenas. Now today shows up at the hearing unannounced. You think he's staying down the road with Daddy? Uh, first brother James Biden, of course, also skipped a scheduled deposition back in December. His legal team is said to be talking, though, about setting a new date in lieu of his December 13th interview. Hunter gave a speech outside of the Capitol last month where he insisted that his father is not financially involved with his foreign dealings uh, with countries like China and Ukraine. Uh, Calmer said the Bidens and their associates raked in over 24 million from 2014 to 2019 from countries like China, Russia, Romania, and Kazakhstan. Witness testimony confirms then Vice President Biden met, spoke by phone, dined, and had coffee with his family's foreign business associates. President Biden has repeatedly lied to the American people about speaking with his son's associates. Look, Hunter kind of confirmed that yesterday in the hallway when he answered the reporter's question. Why why did your why did your dad take your calls while you were talking with your business associates? Um, look, th this is, a, he's rolling the dice. Hunter Biden is by openly defying these congressional committees. He, he believes, and Hey, maybe he's right, but let's hope at some point 
that even the Biden Justice Department understands that they can't continue to ignore this. Republicans say that the White House's admission uh, may ultimately support an article of impeachment against Joe Biden. The admission they're talking about, of course, is that Biden said the other day that he was familiar ahead of time that Hunter would be defying these subpoenas and that he would be uh, at the Capitol steps a few weeks ago when he made the statement. Contempt of Congress is a crime punishable by a minimum of 30 days behind bars per offense. Now, as you know, it's different for Republicans. Two former Trump advisors, Steve Bannon, Peter Navarro, were convicted by Biden Justice Department for crimes for refusing to testify to the House Select Committee who was investigating the Capitol's uh, protest. They're in, they were convicted. They're having to appeal their conviction. Uh, Representative Mace yesterday told uh, Hunter that he's playing with the truth. She said Hunter Biden wasn't afraid to sell access to Joe Biden to the highest bidder when he was in elected office. He wasn't afraid to trade on the Biden brand, peddle influence, and share those ill-gotten gains with members of his family, including Joe Biden. He wasn't afraid to compromise the integrity of the presidency and the vice presidency by involving Joe Biden in shady business deals with our foreign adversaries. But Hunter Biden, you were too afraid to show up for a deposition and you still can't today, she said. The uh, representative from the 1st Congressional District in South Carolina concluded, my last message to you, Hunter Biden, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639 is the Furman Ford text line. Your comments are welcome. Are mass mandates about to come back? Some hospital systems are beginning to reinstate mass mandates, according to multiple reports around the country. First, let me tell you about Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. Over three years ago now, I was introduced to Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at PhD Weight Loss Nutrition. I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly. Three years later, I've been able to maintain that weight, and that's what I love about PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. It's not a diet. It's not a fad diet. It's not one that you're going to lose the weight and then put it back on uh, within six months or a year. It's all about the science of nutrition, and Dr. Lucas and her team will teach you what to eat, when to eat, and how to eat. And they will give you the tools to maintain that weight once you lose it. Let me encourage you to make that call today. Go ahead and set up your first consultation, 864-252-4925, 864-252-4925. Get the consultation scheduled so that you can start your journey as well. And within a few weeks, You, too, can be talking about losing 10, 20, 30 pounds. Find them online at myphdweightloss.com. Ph.D. Weight Loss Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. So New York City public hospitals are joining a growing number of health care facilities around the country who are reinstating mask mandates, according to multiple news reports. The indoor mask requirement is in effect at 11 hospitals. 30 health centers, and five long-term care facilities that uh, are part of the New York City Health Plus hospital system, according to a recent news report. The mandates uh, are in response to a rise in COVID-19 cases and influenza respiratory infections. As of January 1st of this this year, the seven-day average of COVID cases in New York City was 2,131, according to the New York City Department of Health. This is a slight uptick over previous weeks, but far, far lower than the count seen two years ago in January of uh, of 2022 when the seven-day average was about 41,000, not even close, nearly 20 times higher today. Uh, There's been an increase, of course, in influenza cases as well. The indoor masking requirement applies only to patient care areas uh, in the facilities, according to the health commissioner, Dr. Ashwin Vassan, who told a local news outlet that it was something that they felt like they, it was necessary to do. Uh, we're seeing this in other 
states around the country as well, California, Illinois, Massachusetts, some in North Carolina, Washington, Wisconsin. Uh, a number of health facilities have instituted mass mandates according to recent reports. Some of those uh, include like UC Health in Cincinnati, the Sonoma, California Valley Hospital, University of Chicago Medicine Center, Center, City of Hope in uh, California, uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, their uh, UMass Memorial Medical Center, among others. On a national level, hospital admissions due to COVID increased just over 16% to uh, almost 30,000 for the week ending December 23rd. That's the latest data available. Hospital admissions linked to uh, influenza also increased nationally to almost 15,000 for that same week. Uh, Some 44% of adults in the U.S. had received the flu vaccine by late December. Uh, Only an estimated 19% had received the updated COVID-19. The CDC urges people and institutions to visit the agency's website for information to help make them uh, uh, to make a more informed decision. On social media, people have been voicing their opinions about the return of mass mandates. One individual wrote on a YouTube thread about mass mandates. Imagine being double mask and quadruple jabbed, still catch COVID and thinking this stuff still works. Another said, uh, just in time for the election year. Senator uh, Eric Schmidt, a Republican of Missouri, posted his, his response to the city of St. Louis issuing mass mandates for its workers on January the 5th, calling the the move tyrannical. Dr. uh, Mark Siegel, clinical professor of medicine at NYU Medical Center and a Fox News medical contributor, also weighed in, saying there's a large increase in hospitalizations from a combination of COVID and flu. Uh, RSV is contributing, but also has already peaked, he said. Uh, he said that he does not support universal mass mandates, but says that they do make some sense in some situations in some hospitals. What, what's your take on that? You, you think that it's the right thing to do to have mass mandates? 864-477-5639 is the Furman Ford text line. Uh, you know, the last time I was in a Prisma Health facility, They required me to put a mask on. I I don't know. I haven't checked. Uh, Maybe we'll check on that and get back to you on our next edition of the, uh, of the, uh, just the truth to let you know if there are any mask mandates here in the, um, Carolinas on the Furman Ford text line. Texter says, Joey, I absolutely forward your podcast every day. Even to my Democrat friends, I want them especially to listen. Wonder if they listen, uh, this, this is in response. I'd ask, uh, I'd ask you to. If you enjoy just the truth to forward it to friends, to help us grow our, our audience here, to grow our movement, our coalition. Uh, so, uh, look, send it to, send it to your Democrat friends. We'd love for them to listen to, uh, on the firm and text line, Jeff says, do you really think Hunter Biden sit down and did those paintings himself? Uh, have you seen the paintings, Jeff? Uh, I think he probably did (laughs) because they look like an amateur, I did them. I'm, I'm thinking about reproducing one and seeing what I can sell it for. You think I could sell it if I were to reproduce one of the Hunter Biden originals? What What should I ask for it? What What's What do you think a good price would be? Eight six four four seven seven Joey is the Furman Ford text line. A uh, texter. This is this is our uh, this is Ace. He says uh, the left doesn't have to turn their head. Most of the left have no idea what's going on in the political realm. Anyone with common sense would know that the corruption by the Democrat Party is real. I'm convinced that all, in all capitals, of the left are either completely ignorant or wicked, possibly both. Joey, thank you for all that you do for us. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Ace, appreciate that. Our text of encouragement today on the Firm of War text line, Life is wasted if we do not grasp the glory of the cross, cherish it for the treasure that it is, and cleave to it as the highest price of every pleasure and the deepest comfort in every pain. What was once foolishness to us, a crucified God, must become our wisdom and our power and our only boast in this world. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line as well, 864-477-5639. So the South Carolina legislature is back in session this week, kicking off year two of their two-year session. 
Governor Henry McMaster shared his vision for school teacher salaries. If you're a teacher, you're going to like this. You're going to want to stick around to, uh, to what the governor had to say. First, let me tell you about my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Portions of today's show made possible by Jeff and Johnny and the whole team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Are you tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff with no appliance knowledge? If so, you can change that. You can have a different experience when you go to Pickens, and it's, it's worth the short drive from wherever you are right now uh, to Pickens and visit with my friends at discounted appliance warehouse i recommend them because i use them myself if i need an appliance they're my go-to uh, they they have over 1500 appliances in stock at any given time quite often you can buy it today use it today they have nearly perfect reviews on google their uh, team there at discounted appliance warehouse has the knowledge that you need to, to that you're going to make the right purchase They'll show you around the warehouse. They have an award-winning installation uh, crew. They um, have extended warranties. Basically, they just take care of you before, during, and after the sale. Find them online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. So, with Lieutenant Governor Pamela Evett by his side, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster announced during a news conference yesterday as we kick off the legislative session uh, that he would like to see another increase in starting teacher pay with the go- goal of raising pay to at least 50000 by 2026. Seven years ago, the minimum starting salary of a teacher in South Carolina was $30,113, and the average teacher salary was well below the Southeast average. Today, the minimum starting salary of a teacher in South Carolina is $42,500, and the average teacher salary here in South Carolina now exceeds the Southeastern average. My executive budget proposes increasing the starting teacher salary to $45,000. My goal by 2026 is to have a minimum starting salary of at least $50,000, and I emphasize that is a minimum starting salary, at least $50,000. We want to have the best teachers in the country. Yes, we do. We absolutely want to have the best teachers because we want our kids educated the best, coming out of school, ready to go to work, and contributing to their community. The state newspaper in its report said uh, for years teachers have looked at a chart to see how much pay they would receive. The salary is determined by how many years of experience they have and how much education they've completed uh it's a pretty complex matrix Uh, the state newspaper does a pretty good job of breaking it down uh the state's minimum salary schedule has 23 annual steps and recognizes five education levels bachelor's bachelor's degree with 18 credit hours of continuing education a master's degree and it goes on up from there to to uh to getting your doctorate as part of his budget proposal governor mcmaster wants to simplify uh, simplify this schedule to include only two education lanes, a bachelor's degree and graduate degree. The state minimum salary schedule also goes up to 23 years, even though some districts around the state extend it even longer. But Master wants the state's minimum schedule to extend to 30 years. School districts also have the ability to pay more if they choose. Under the governor's proposal, the minimum would also go to 45000 from the present forty two five. McMaster wants to reach a 50,000 minimum by 2026 as one of the initiatives to address the growing teacher shortage in South Carolina. In total, uh, Governor McMaster wants to spend $250 million uh, on, uh, more on state aid to classrooms, which pays for teacher salaries. His budget would also include $10 million to provide additional pay for teachers who take on extra responsibilities or work with students who have challenges. There would also be an additional two, uh, $25 million in annual money to recruit teachers in critical needs areas like a middle school education, special education, and elementary education in schools with a below average or unsatisfactory rating. A teacher turnover rate of 20% or higher uh, for uh, three years now or have a poverty level of 70%. Uh, the governor also wants to increase the classroom supply stipend to 400 from the 350 that doesn't seem like a lot of money, does it? 400 bucks. 
Uh, ultimately, any change, of course, to the salary schedule has to be approved by the legislature. Lawmakers are uh, in the very early stages of writing a budget for the upcoming fiscal year. McMaster proposal is, is working off of recommendations from the Teacher Recruitment and Retention Task Force, which issued a report this past spring. That task force recommended a $1,500 increase for every three years of experience, but the governor recommended a 2000 increase instead. We'll see. And uh, look, I believe we need to take care of our teachers. Uh, one final thing, it's an end of an era in Tuscaloosa, Alabama in college football. Head coach Nick Saban retiring. Uh, Saban won six national championships with Alabama. One with LSU, his seven titles are the most by any coach in college football history. In a statement, he said, the University of Alabama has been a very special place to Terry and me. We've enjoyed every minute of our 17 years being the head coach at Alabama as well as becoming a part of the Tuscaloosa community. It is not just about how many games we won and lost, but it's about the legacy and how we went about it. We always tried to do it the right way, he said. The goal was always to help players create more value for their future, be the best player they could be, and be more successful in life because they were part of the program. Hopefully, we have done that and we'll always consider Alabama our home. This year's Crimson Tide went 12-2 uh, and two after making the college football playoff with an upset victory over top-ranked Georgia in the SEC championship. Bama earned the number four seed in the CFP but lost to number one Michigan, the eventual national champion in the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. Saban is 72 years old and coached uh, Alabama since 2007. And, of course, you know the speculation now begins. Does Dabo Sweeney leave Clemson and go back home to Alabama? Uh, it's already been rumored and a lot of speculation that that's sort of Dabo's dream job. We will see. That's it for today's Just the Truth. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me. Uh, as I have broadcast from the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio to lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails with the most up-to-date news. We're back again tomorrow. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line, 864 477 Joey, keep them coming and keep those emails coming as well. Joey at joeyhudson.com. Folks, appreciate you being with me. Remember, God's got this. He's still in control. <laughs>